Alright everybody welcome to your third Ionic tutorial in which I'm gonna show you just the directory structure and how everything is laid out in Ionic framework and how basically everything is set it up. So Ionic is a very nice customized framework and we have just installed it and it has provided us with a lot of customizability and a lot of code as well to begin with so you don't have to you know just wait for writing a thousand lines then a hello world program would appear no that's not the case with this so beginning from the start we have this hooks folder well this is related to Cordova this program right here which we installed well this manages um, basically to get um, like the native API support for the mobile devices or basically just manages the bundles and just bundles the packages of the application so Cordova is you know you would not like to mess with all of these files so you won't pretty much you know need to edit this folder in your project I mean I haven't edited in real you know in some time so I don't think you need to hook with this hooks, hooks folder so the next one is the plugins well these plugins as I say that they are sort of the ionic plugins but mostly you see that these are Cordova plugins so for this application it requires these sort of plugins well the plugin requirement would depend from the template to template so if you have a blank template then this would be probably be blank or some sort of a plugin or two only but if you have a more complex template set it up then this would be this would have a lot of plugins so then the next one is scss folder and this scss is basically the sas folder so this right here you can actually just code in your sas styles and uh, yeah if you you know if you're not comfortable with sas then that's not a problem because you can actually add CSS into this folder as well so if you just know SAS then that would be a plus point for you for Ionic but if you don't then that's not a very much reason to worry about you can actually just directly code your CSS as well then yeah so we have already moved into the www folder well this is sort of the folder which um, is like it this folder is like your public HTML directory if you have ever used FTP then you'll know that public HTML is the folder which is visible to the user so this is sort of your public HTML directory for your application the mobile application so this is your CSS then we have the images these are some sort of default images for this project then we have a JS folder which just has all of that JavaScript set it up for us for the tabs template for now and then we have the controllers the controllers JavaScript file then we have a services file well don't worry we'll be just coding that all of that stuff from scratch so you'll be you know just comfortable with that real soon then we have uh, this templates folder the templates as the name says that they are sort of kind of views so this is the chart detail then tab account then tab charts will be just going over through the coding section later on then we have the index and this is kind of your splash page which appears the very first time the user opens your application then we have this bar bower whatever you you know pronounce it like so this is just a package manager for Ionic so I don't think so you would pretty much need to edit up this file as well then we have this editor configuration I don't know what this is uh, no idea so this is I guess the sort of sublime text file only because it in the insert final new line or trim trailing white space doesn't look like that any of the stuff like gulp or uh, Cordova or Ionic would actually need it 
then this git ignore is useless for you if you are not using git but if you are using git then this would just simply mean that you could just exclude some of the files from being watched over or just pushed to your repository when you just push your code on the github repository so we won't pretty much need this unless I just create a repository of our final application which we'll be creating sometime later then we have this bar.json then this is a JSON file which is sort of just the name of the application hello ionic then this is private then the developer dependencies then we have this configuration.xml well uh, you might edit a thing or two here like this email address or your name and uh, the name of the description right there but other than that you won't pretty much need it at all then we have the gulp file well this gulp file is actually the gulp is basically this would require a whole other tutorial for gulp well this is the automator for javascript like if you have made a change to your script it would just keep a watch on your files and would you know just sort of reload the browser so that your changes are always live and it does a lot of other things as well we'll be taking a look at that later on so these are some of the things which it is doing like this part of code is watching on the code then this is some sort of install thing then this is git check for version control now we have the sas one which just i guess sort of uh, minifies it or you know just compiles your sas code to css code and all of those modules you know uh, that sort of things we'll be just taking a look at gulp um, in some other tutorial then we have this ionic project as a file nothing much interesting here then we have our package.js1 file our old friend which would just you know allow you to keep your dependencies and all of that stuff you need to know about your application in a single place so that's how pretty much your application for ionic is laid out and i really think that this is a very simple layout system ionic has provided and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for this tutorial and from the next tutorial onwards or maybe after that we'll be starting off with writing some of our first code in ionic so if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching